Hi, it's Simon. Welcome back to Better Creating. And well, I've been feeling stuck. So as we say in London, I pulled my socks up, rolled, and made a change. With all the new features Notion have been adding, I thought it was about time we built something new together that really makes use of all of them. Today, I'm gonna show you how to build step-by-step -step, a powerful habit tracker that will help you turn goals into reality through some tiny habit and behavior design change. This video has two sections. So part one, I'm gonna quickly cover the fundamental thinking you need to know about tracking habits in the first place and a simple chore of my Notion build. And part two, the step-by-step -step Notion tutorial on how to build it from scratch. It includes making use of the new Notion progress bars, concat formulas for cool gallery reporting views on your progress, and using the new default database template feature for new habits. So much good stuff. As always, chapter mark is below, but wait, I'm super excited to say that this will be part of my Notion from scratch series, a complete collection of Notion build tutorials that help you learn each fundamental of Notion whilst building an element of your own second brain productivity system with me step by step from scratch. Each section can be followed as a standalone build video or as part of a full course. And let me know in the comments what you'd like to see included in the series. Hashtag build in public people. Before we get stuck in, if you like the look of the wider system shown in this video, you can also download this entire habit tracker build along with the wider template connected to it. It's a complete reworking of my previous simplified Notion template. The new version now includes my prompted goal setting template, this new habit tracker, a simple task and project manager, as well as a prompted stoic journal. So part one, the fundamentals, goals, systems, and designing behavior. So the idea of lifestyle design and behavior design has been around for a long time now in the productivity space. It's about finding ways to make more happen with less, championing efficiency over effort, and building sustainable focused habits that gradually lead you closer to the life you want. For me, at the heart of this is honing goals and building systems that help you reach them. So the idea is that it ensures we put our energy in the right place day to day and ensures that our actions naturally point towards the life that we choose. So what's that got to do with Notion? Pretty simple. As James Clear famously talks about in his book, Atomic Habits, it's the systems that we fall back on that really make the difference. Stanford's behavioral scientist, BJ Fogg's concept of the information action fallacy in his book, Tiny Habits, is great on reminding us that if we have a strong enough knowledge and ownership of why we should make a change, we're far more likely to be able to make it. And I believe the best way to do this is to reflect and review on your previous year in order to identify what you want to build on and change in the next. So I recommend starting with a yearly reflection or a reflection on what's gone well or less well in a previous period, and then you can better judge the habits you want to set and why. I won't dive deep into goal setting in this video, but you might enjoy my step-by-step -step video guide doing a yearly review that's listed in the description. So I built this kind of goal setting template that prompts me through it in Notion to find inspiring, actionable goals that align with your personal vision or values. That is most important knowing why. So once we have our goals set, we can identify the milestones and regular practices or habits that are gonna get us there. Basically, the fundamental idea is that you reverse engineer the process and identify the small regular actions you can take each day, ensuring that your energy is pointing in the right direction and you've created a system you can fall back on to make sure you track it and get it done. Now, BJ Fogg's Tiny Habits book also has a great approach to structuring how we build new habits. And it's a big inspiration for my Notion habit tracker setup using ABC. You anchor the habit to a point in your regular routine, express the tiny behavior shift in it that's in its simplest form, and then find a meaningful way to simply celebrate when you've executed. So here's how Fogg's concept is baked into my Notion template. I set up relations between my goals and projects and habits that will get me there. So I know that reverse engineering is working and they will link back to the strong why. From the goals database, I simply add a relation column, select the habit tracker and connect them. Now, each habit I create, I can link back to the goal. Nice. And so the habit tracker, the idea is I can set up a new habit, let's say it's a regular reading practice, set the frequency, such as three times a week, and then the duration I'm gonna track it for, maybe a year, let's say August the 1st to August the 1st, for example. Each time I complete a habit, I can have a little celebration by, well, ticking a box. 
adding to the counter or even selecting the habit as a relation and linking it to a daily log page. I'll show you how all that works later on. The reporting view lets me know how many I've logged, when I last logged it, and the progress I've made so far with that progress bar. Right, time to build this one. Feel free to pause the video and work along with me. I've tried to keep this tutorial clean and simple, but I find it's better to share the steps and then give you time to pause the video and do the work so these don't become massively long videos. Let's do it. So building a habit tracker, we're gonna build this, this reporting view. And if I click through to the main page, this entire build here, along with these cards that report. Alongside that, we also have a default new habit template, which we're gonna create. So that every time you click a new one of these, it sets up the basics. Um, and inside these, you'll see um, they have a range of different details and you can uh, list different things. Now you might notice uh, with my templates, I build my systems by creating all of the main databases in a systems menu inside the main dashboard of my system. And because this video is part of a series where we're gonna build an entire Life OS second brain system in steps, uh, I wanted to do that for this to show you how to do it. Uh, so we're gonna start with the habit tracker. Uh, the reason that's really good is it means that when it's in your bar, it just is all contained within a single drop-down menu and it makes things a lot cleaner in your system. And you navigate everything within it using the buttons that you can create here, these menus and so on and so forth. But first off, today let's just create this main home screen and into it place our habit tracker and build it. So to do that, I'm gonna go out of that uh, main thing and I'm gonna create a new one here. We're gonna do wherever you wanna start building, forward slash page and create a new page. Empty with icon. We're gonna go up to the dots in the top corner and make it full width. And I'm gonna add a cover and you can select a cover. And I'm going to add an icon. Notion have created their own new icons within here. So you could create your own custom set. I'm gonna be doing that soon, but first, Let's use Notion's icons. This is a home screen, use the home, and let's make it a blue theme in this system. Name it, you can call it home, whatever you want. I'm gonna call it My Life OS 2022. How about that? Now, within this system, we're gonna do various things. You might want to put an inspirational quote, but what we're gonna do, first of all, is go forward slash tog, select toggle, and we're gonna call this one system menu. Drop it in underneath, I'm gonna make it bold. And I'm gonna insert into there a little uh, emoji. Now you could try function to bring that up, or depending on what you use, um, you can also go up to the edit menu and select emojis and symbols if you're using Mac. I think it's something like uh, command full stop, command period if you're using Windows. So into here, I'm gonna select function and I'm going to put a little cog for the system menu. So in our system menu, we can now do forward slash database, and I want a database full page. Let's add an icon. This is gonna be our habit tracker. So I'm gonna use a cross, make it blue like everything else. Call it my habits. Let's add a cover. So I'm gonna rename this as just the main name for the view, my habit tracker. Let's now put in the main functions. First of all, change the name of name to habits. This one, we're going to make a number. So you're gonna change the type to a number property. And this one is gonna be called log. So where are we gonna log habits? Now, again, I quite like with this for a look to use the emojis and symbols. And if you go right down to the bottom of them, you'll find these kind of interesting emojis that are even a bit cleaner. And that's how I'm gonna make mine look like this. A pencil and a little cross. It just makes it distinctive. Pretty cool. I don't want that sort and I don't know why it did it, but let's just delete the sort. So you've got the habit, the log. Now for this, the way it's gonna work is we just follow me through and we'll put them all in. We want a start date. We're gonna click for a new thing, find a date column start date, there it is. We want an end date, date. Another column, this one is going to be a number and you're gonna call this one target per week. That will make sense in a moment. You can adjust these columns so that they take up less space. Now, we're gonna add a formula. This is where it gets exciting because we wanna calculate 
how long you're doing this for in weeks. This is going to be called duration in weeks. To do this formula, first of all, let's just put in a couple of things. We're going to put the start date. I'm putting mine as the 1st of September. You can format that if you want by clicking on here. And for example, go for day, month, year, which I prefer. And let's just do the same on this. Date and format, day, month, year. Very British approach. Let's set a date to finish, which is one year later. Let's change the end number. And I'm gonna set a target of weeks of three. Let's now make the formula. You're gonna go in here and you're gonna click on here and type date B and you'll see date between. And it will give us the means to do it. Date between, you need a date one, date two, and then in how in what you want it to do, years, quarters, months, weeks. We're gonna go for weeks. So we're aiming to copy that. So you're gonna do it like this. It's pretty instinctive. Date between when it ends, comma, from when it starts, comma, open the parentheses, and we're gonna do weeks, close it, and you'll know it's worked because that blue done comes up, and there you go, 52. That is correct, right? 52 weeks between those two dates is a year. Great, formula number two. So from this, you have a means to log it, and you want to calculate what your target is for this uh, habit. So you've got the number of times per week, um, you can do that as much as you like, the start and end date, and how long it's gonna last. So we can therefore calculate the total target we're aiming to hit between those dates. So we're gonna add a, another formula here, and we're gonna call this total target. This is really simple if you think about it. You wanna do the target per week, space, a little star for times, duration in weeks. That's it, simple calculation, there you go. Three times a week times 52 weeks is 156. That's gonna allow us to create reports based on the comparison between what we've logged, which we just simply do by doing that, and the total target. Really simple. So next up, you might want to start adding some habits to see how this works. But rather than do that manually here, I want us to create, first of all, a template page. Now a template page in a database, if you're brand new to this, means that we can create a page so that every time we add a new thing, it will give us the contents of that page. So you could make this really complex or really simple. I'm just doing it for this one, start off with, to make it really uh, visual. But if we move on to something like projects uh, in your builds, you can then create reporting views within the projects of other related evidence and information. So, new template. Now we're gonna call this new habit. You can see here it says you're editing a template. Now what I wanna do is add an icon and we're going to make that a similar icon, I think, a little cross in blue. Now, one option with this would be to just change the color so it has a kind of um, hierarchy if you wanted to. So for example, I might just make the habits orange. Now, we're gonna add a cover. And the reason I wanna do that is I just want a clean, simple cover for our gallery views later on. So we're gonna change the cover. This is just for the template, so if you never changed it, it would work for everything. So I'm just keeping mine really simple by typing white, clicking that first image of something white. <laughs> it could be whatever you want for a habit, but um, I like it. You might find a tick box somewhere or something, or your own image. Now you can also pre-fill these in. For example, uh, I might want to set the um, basic target per week to always be three, and you could change it, uh, it's up to you. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it like that. One more thing to do with the habit is to change the default. This is a new feature that's recently come out. If you clicked new over here, you would just have an empty page, but we're gonna go here and set that as default for all views in my habits. And now, if you add a new one, you should see, let's call this running. It comes up with the icon. If we open it, it's all formatted as we wanted it to be. And of course you can change covers and so on and so forth. Pretty cool. Uh, let's call this one meditation. Now obviously that was created without, but you can put it in like that. Now what I really like to do is for each of my habits is change the cover so that it looks correct. So for running, I'm going to put in a start date, the same, end date, the same, target per week is 
three runs. Why don't we make meditation seven? And you'll see the calculations are precise. So we've got some basics, but now I want to show you this. This is my original. Uh, I want to start creating the progress bar uh, that we've got and these reports. So that's going to be the next stage. And this, a habit reporting card view. Now this is really how I would generally use it day to day on the main dashboard. So you've got a nice clean view of what we've created, the reporting views, uh, which are using these CONCAT formulas, and then you can click through and just simply log things and see all the information. Some other stuff we'll do in a bit. So let's go back to where we're building. And we're gonna first of all create a new formula. And this is gonna be go down here and go formula. And you're gonna call this one progress. Now, we need this to come out in order to use these new progress uh, reporting views that we've got here, these little circles or bars or whatever you want, as a number. Now, this is a simple formula. We're gonna click in here and we're gonna type in floor. You can use round, but floor will take it down to a kind of below a decimal, which is really nice. If it's 2.8, it will just give you two. It's a nicer use uh, than round. So we're gonna do floor of the log forward slash, so that's divided by our total target times 100, close the brackets off, that'll just give us one, and then we want to divide that by 100, done. So that's give us a, given us a percentage, let's just put some numbers in here so we get an example, 17%, 1%, so on and so forth. It's not reading brilliantly yet, right? So now you're gonna click onto the thing and do edit property. We just have to click number format and you can set it to what you want. We want percent. That will give you the percentage report. And then these amazing new bar or ring visuals, you can set the color you want it to be. So let's make it orange since that seems to be our look. And you can even remove the number or show the number depending on how you want it to show. I really like just having it nice and clean like that and just having that kind of ring report. So we're gonna do that. Why not, let's show the percentage. Cool. So to show how this can look good, let's go and add another view to the habit tracker. So I'm gonna click here and create a new tab. We're gonna come across and we're gonna call this habit report and we're gonna make it a gallery. And you'll see it's nice and clean at the moment. So you wanna come down here, change the card preview to the page cover and you'll see the visuals that we set earlier. Then you can come back out of there, click on the dots again, and go to properties. And you want to work out which of them you wanna see. So I wanna see progress at the moment. That's all I wanna see. So there you go, that gives you a, a simple report. Now we've got the log, right? We could see the log and we could see the total target, kind of, because when you have number properties showing up in galleries, they don't tell you what they are. And that is why we use CONCAT formulas like these, so that when you see them on the report card, they look really good. So in the next part of this build, I will show you how to do that. Well, hey, this is a big build and you have completed the first section. I'm gonna move this into a second video now. So if you wanna come back and continue the build, make sure you're subscribed and you have those notifications turned on so you can see the next one next week, or I'll link it here if it's already out. Brilliant. Let me know in the comments below how it's going and I'll see you on the next one.